In this lesson, I am going to discuss linear functions. Linear functions are functions that can be expressed in the form f of x equals mx plus b. This is saying that linear functions are functions wherein the highest exponent of x is just equal to 1. Note that b is our y-intercept because when we set x equals 0, our f of 0 is equal to m times 0 plus b. And that's really equal to b. Also, m is our slope. We will talk about slope in the next few slides. Let us determine if the following are linear functions or not. Number one, is this a linear function? Yes, it is. Your m is equal to 2 and your b is equal to 5. Number two, y minus x plus 2 equals 0. Yes, because we can write it in this form. y is equal to x minus 2, which means that m is 1 and b is negative 2. So remember that m is the coefficient of x. What about number 3? g of x equals x squared plus 5. No, this is not a linear function because the highest exponent of x is equal to 2. For linear functions, the highest exponent should be always equal to 1. Let us discuss the slope of a line. Suppose that I have two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. They are points on a line. The slope of the line is given by the difference in the y coordinate, so this one, y2 minus y1 over the difference in the x coordinates, or x2 minus x1. We call y2 minus y1 as our rise and x2 minus x1 as our run. To go from point 1 to point 2, you go up by y2 minus y1 steps and you run by x2 minus x1 steps. Notice that if we are given a graph, you can calculate the slope of a line either by doing this rise over run or by using the formula. Now what is an interpretation of the slope of a line? The slope is a measure of the steepness of the line. I have three lines here, lines A, B, and C. Let us calculate its slope. Now, before we proceed, notice that for the rise, if you are going up, the rise is positive. If you are going down, the rise is negative. For the run, if you're going to the right, the run is positive. If you're going to the left, the run is negative. So, for example, for line A, what is the slope? Get two points. I will get the origin because that is a point on the line and this point. This is the point 2, 1. From this point to this point, I go up by one step. So my rise is 1 and end. go to the right by two units. Hence, my slope is my rise is 1, my run is 2. What about for line B? I will get this point, and this point here is 1, 2. So I go up by 1, 2, 2 units, and go to the right by 1 unit. So that's 2. And lastly, for line C, I will get this point. So from the origin to this point, negative 1, 2, I go up by 2 units, 1, 2. I go to the right by 1 unit. So that's negative 1. So the slope is negative 2. Now why do we say that the slope is the measure of the steepness of the line? If you look at lines A and B, the slope of line A is 1 half whereas the slope of line B is 2. The higher the slope of the line, the steeper is your line. So imagine this as if this is a hill. It is more difficult to climb a mountain going through line B then going through line A. Also notice that in this example, if the slope of a line is positive, if you trace it from left to right, it's going up this one, the line B, it's going up as well. Whereas for line C, if you trace it from left to right, it's going down. 
because the slope is negative. Let us discuss vertical and horizontal lines. The graph of the function y is equal to b is a horizontal line passing through the point 0, p. It is called a constant function. So here are examples of your constant functions. y is equal to 3. It passes through the point the equation y equals 3 says that the y coordinate should always be equal to 3. So for example, this point negative 1, 3, negative 2, 3, negative 3, 3. These are just some of the points whose y coordinate is equal to 3. So if you get all those points, you will get a horizontal line. Here is another example. If you have y equals negative 2, it's also a line passing through 0, negative 2. Now notice that the equation x equals a is not a function. The graph of this equation is a vertical line passing through a0. So for example, I have x equals negative 1. This is saying that the x coordinate is always equal to 1. We do not care about the y Coordinate. So here are some points. This point, this point, this point. Correct. All of these points have negative 1 as their x coordinate. So that's why the graph is just a vertical line. And since the graph is a vertical line, it fails the vertical line test. Correct. This is not a function because you have 1x. In this case, you have negative 1, but it goes to a lot of y coordinates. It can be 1, 2, 3. It goes to the set of all real numbers. So similarly, x equals 2 is a vertical line passing through the point 2, 0. So here is a summary of everything that we have discussed about slopes. A graph which is increasing has positive slope. A graph which is decreasing has negative slope. What can we say about the slope of a horizontal line? So if we get two points here, arbitrary points, your rise is equal to 0, correct? But your run is whatever that is. In this case, your run is equal to 2. So that means that your slope is equal to 0 because 0 divided by 2 is equal to 0. Although this is not a linear function, but it is still a line, so let us just consider that. What can you say about the slope of a vertical line? What would be 0 here? If you get any two points, your run would be equal to 0. But remember that your slope is equal to rise over run. So if your run is equal to 0, your slope is undefined. To graph a linear function, all you have to do is to plot two points which satisfy the equation. Normally, these points here are your intercepts. It's best if you get the x and y intercepts. And then, connect the points with a straight line. So for example, I have f of x equals 2x plus 4. Let us find its intercepts. So for the x-intercept, you set y equals 0. So you have 0 equals... 2x plus 4. So x is equal to negative 2. As a point, this is negative 2, 0. What about your y-intercept? Your y-intercept is your b. In this case, that is equal to 4. So as a point, that is 0, 4. Always interpret your x and y intercepts as points. The common mistake for students is when they solve for the x-intercept, negative 2, and y equals 4, what they will do is form the point negative 2, 4. That is wrong. Let us now plot the points. You have negative 2, 0, and 0, 4. You now connect these points using a line. Let me also extend here, there. So remember that your line will always extend indefinitely. So that is the graph of f of x equals 2x plus 4. Now notice that our graph is increasing because your slope is equal to 2. 
what can you say about the domain and the range? For linear functions, the domain and the range are both equal to the set of real numbers. Notice also that if you were not asked to solve for the intercepts, you can also graph it using this method. All you have to do is to look at your slope, which is equal to 2, and your y-intercept, which is equal to 4. Since your y-intercept is 4, you have this point. Alright, since your slope is equal to 2, I can write that as 2 over 1, or I can also write that as negative 2 over negative 1. This is your rise and then run. You can view your rise as negative 2 and your run of negative 1. So that means you go down, your rise is negative 2, so you go down by 2, 1, 2, and then you have a run of negative 1, which means that you go one unit to the left. There you go. You now connect this with a line. As you can see, it really intersects the x-axis at negative 2. Do not forget again to extend your line. Notice that I did not use 2 over 1 because I do not have enough space to go up by 2 units. Next, let us graph g of x equals negative x plus 3. Let us use the last method that I showed you. Just by looking at the slope, which is equal to negative 2, and the y-intercept, your b, which is equal to 3. So I will write negative 1 as negative 1 over 1. So that means... Your rise is negative 1 and your run is equal to 1. Starting at the point 0, 3, I go down by 1 unit because the rise is negative 1 and I go 1 unit to the right and connect those points. Let me just extend this. There you go. That is the graph of g of x equals negative x plus 3. Since we're asked to solve for the intercepts, of course, your x-intercept, when y is equal to 0, you have 0 equals negative x plus 3, which means that x is equal to 3. And of course, your y-intercept is y equals 3. As a point, do not forget to write this as 3, 0, and this one as 0, 3. Always remember that the domain and range of linear functions is the set of real numbers.